Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem string count. So before talking about this problem, let's have a quick review of another problem that is string permutation, which would just help us to understand this problem better. So this was a prerequisite, but even though if you have not understood or something, I would suggest to you that you solve up this problem after this problem. This is not a prerequisite because I would be covering the things that is needed. But that is a very good problem of a recursion and it has appeared many times in an interview and I would suggest that highly recommend it that you solve. Let's come back to this problem. Let's say in this problem you are told that you can only use 1a, 1b and 1c. Okay. And so what are the probable strings that you would have? So if you talk about the recursion tree, it would be something like this. When A is replaced with A, it would become A. When A is replaced with B, it would become this. When A is replaced with C, it would become this. Now if we talk about this, our second character, B is replaced with B, it is this. B is replaced with C, it is this. Then A is replaced with this, this is this. And A is replaced with C, this is this. And then we have A replaced with A and A replaced with B, that is this. This is how we have all the permutation of the given string. So, how many permutations do we really have? Okay, we have the length of the string is 3. Okay, let's just write it here. The length of the string is 3 and the number of strings that is produced using this is 6, which is nothing but 3 factorial which is 2 multiplied by 3 which is equals to 6. This gives us a glimpse that yes something like this is needed. Okay. Just keep this in your mind. This would come into picture. Okay. Now and let's understand this given problem. In this given problem you are told that how many strings you can make by using 1b and 2c and it is at most. At most means what? Maximum. Okay. Remember it. We can use 0b. You can use 1b. 2c that means we can use 0c, 1c and 2c and rest all places would be filled with a. Here comes a concept of multinomial coefficient. Okay. If you have not learned of this topic, let me teach you this topic. So if something is made up of distinct elements, then we have something known as permutation and we have something like n factorial. If there are n elements and we need to find out how many possible permutations are there that is n factorial. But let's say here we have something known as we have something known as the length is let's say the length is n is equals to 3. Let's just write it down n is equals to 3. At this point, let's say I want to use just 1b, just 1b and rest all c, 2c. So if 1b is used, so if there are three positions and here if I keep one, the remaining two positions are a, that is why I am saying that I can use, I can use 1b and 2a's. So it would look something like this that 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial multiplied by 2 factorial. Okay, this is the binomial coefficient thing. Let's understand this by using a formula. So if let's say now instead of a, b, c, let's say we just have a, b, b. Okay. Then the number of permutations of a, b, b is how much? Let's just understand this by using this. Replacing a with a, it would be a, b, b. Replacing a with b, it would be b, a, b. Replacing again a with b, it would be b, b, a. Then if we replace the second with second, it would be a, b, b. It would remain the same. It would be again a, b, b. And if we have B, A, B, second with second, second with third, if we do, then B, B, A. And if we do something like B, B, A, second with third, it would be B, A, B. 
So if you observe that these two are identical, so I would be removing this. B, A, B is identical. I would be removing this. Okay. And anything more that is identical? Yes, this is identical. So now if you observe that there are fewer permutations than 6. Earlier, if everything was distant, that is A, B, C, it was fine. But here you can see that there are fewer permutations. So we need to do something about this. So when everything was distant, it was n factorial. But what about this case? So this case, the number of the number of possible strings where b is repeated twice. The formula is 3 factorial divided by how much? That is 1 factorial because 1 is used at this point and 2 factorial. So that is why it would be 2 multiplied by 3 and this would be 1 multiplied by 2. So 1 would be 1 won't come into picture. So the answer is 3 and yes, we can see that the answer is 3. So what did I write here? That is this 3n is n factorial and this is the population of the character of the first kind that is 1 factorial that is number of a is factorial and this is the population of the second factorial that is b's population. And this is known as multinomial coefficient. This is the algorithm of multinomial coefficient. So you need to understand. Let's just sum up everything in a nutshell. So if the characters are distant, then it is n factorial. If the characters are not distinct, that is if b is coming twice and a is coming once, then n factorial divided by the population of a and the divided by multiplied by the population of b. And if it was C somewhere here also, it would have been C factorial also. And this would keep going on. Okay, so we can use this formula. Let's just deduce this. So the very first one, we can use maximum 2C and 1B. This is what we can need to do. So the very first thing is that we would use only A. Okay. Here comes the very first part. So, only a. That is, if let's say the number uh, 3. So, that would be n factorial divided by the population of a. So, if the string constitutes of only a. So, if let's say there are 3 positions and everything would constitute of a. Then the population of a would be equal to the length. That is why this would be n factorial which is equal to 1. This is the first one. Talking about the next one, okay, 1a, only a, then 1b and rest all position. So if one position, let's say there are three position, if one is taken by b, then there are n minus two position which needs to be filled by a because we are only using 1b, we are not using c. So 1b and I can say n minus 1 is. So this would be nothing but n factorial divided by 1 factorial multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. Okay. We would simplify this at the end. Let's just understand this. Then if 1b is done, then just use, let us do the same thing for 1c. That would be if 1c is used, then rest all position needs to be filled with a. That is n minus 1 position would be remaining. So n factorial divided by 1 factorial, the population of a and the population of b, that is n minus 1 factorial. Done. 1c is also done. 1c is done. Then we have 2c. If we are using 2c, then this would be nothing but n minus 2. 2a's if we are using 2c's. So that would be n factorial. So at this point you would see that yes, you can build out out of this. n factorial divided by 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 2 factorial. So 1c is done, 1b is done, 1c is done, 2c is also done. 
okay now not to c is needs to be so 1b with a is done 1b and a is done 1c with a is done 2c with a is done now c b with c and b with 2c b with 2c and rest all positions so these all are remaining so this is all, all the combinations i would be writing down the combination b with 1c b with 2c and this is done and these are the remaining two cases that we need to handle okay so 2c is also done now 1b 1c so 1b 1c so if two positions are filled then we would be left with n minus two positions for a and that would be n factorial divided by one factorial multiplied by one factorial multiplied by n minus two factorial fair enough here comes the last one that is 2c and 1b so 2c and 1b this is the max we can do so we have n factorial positions and dividing it would be 2 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by n minus 3 and minus 3 factorial done till this point now let us just simplify all of this because we don't need to use factorials why so this is equal to 1 so this is clear so at this point this thing is clear so this would be what this is n factorial that is let's say n minus 1 okay so i can write it as n minus 1 factorial multiplied by n n factorial can be written as n minus 1 factorial multiplied by n and this can be one i can ignore and n minus 1 factorial so i would cut both of this which is equal to n so this is 1 and this is n same goes for this side i can again write n minus 1 factorial multiplied by n n can be n factorial can be written as like this and n minus 1 factorial i can write it like this and this would be n okay and i can write it in the same manner for this n minus 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 n multiplied by n okay and this is 2 multiplied because 2 factorial can be written as 2 1 multiplied by 2 1 i can ignore and n minus 2 factorial so i can remove out of this and this is equal to n minus 1 multiplied by n is equals to 2 n minus 2 okay and this is equal to the same thing that we did before so one factorial one factorial we can simply ignore so n minus 1 multiplied by n would be remaining okay and this would be again n minus 2 because n minus 3 would be cutting it off multiplied by n minus 1 multiply it by n okay multiply it by n and below would be just 2 because we would be ignoring this if we multiply everything if we multiply everything that we have written we can just write a plus 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 to everything and that would be done now so let's just write this at this point return first one is 1 then we have something like n and then we have again and so we so i would be cutting this one is done n is done and then again n is done okay then 2n minus 2 okay that is or i can simply write n multiplied by n minus 1 i can simply take up this and divided by 2 at the end i can simply write n 
मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एन माइनस वन ओके दिस हैज आल्सो डिवाइड बाय टू एंड दिस थिंग हैज आल्सो डिवाइड बाय टू ओके सो एन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एन प्लस वन डिवाइडेड बाय टू which one is done this one is done now we have again n minus 1 multiplied by n so we have n multiplied by n minus 1 okay then we have something interesting that is n minus 1 so this is again also done n minus 1 n minus 2 multiplied by n so we have something interesting at the end so we would just enclose this with a bracket and multiply it by n so i would just write it in the same manner it is n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n and whole divided by 2 I have written it in the same manner as it is here. Now let us just compare and run and see how many errors are we making. Seems correct. And yes, we got an AC. So to be honest, this long equation you can again write it down in a pen and paper, and you can simplify it. Like you can take out the like terms outside, then you can handle the constants and all. But you wouldn't have come up that how this small line has came up. Okay, so this is by using multinomial coefficient. You take out all the things like this. and then you need to do this so even though the video length is small for this so i know that this problem is a little bit confusing and i took a lot of hard work to make the video time extremely small but extremely insightful a lot of background effort has been given to this problem to just explain you this okay in front of the camera i forgot a lot of things to be honest so i would urge that you comment the rating of this video and leave a small comment for this because it has been a long time i have not read out comments for me so if you have liked it comment it if you didn't like it tell me the ways to improve it that's it for today this is me siddharth hazra signing off thank you everyone